This is McFly Angler. starts now. For a hook, you want a strong saltwater hook like these Risenfly O'Shaughnessy hooks or these Gamagatsu SL11-3Hs, which I am using today in a size 6. You can definitely tie them in larger or smaller sizes as well. Place the hook securely in your vise. For thread, I like this Vivas 6 aught It's fine enough for precision tying, but strong enough for most fishing applications. I'm using white today. Start your thread behind the eye of the hook, and then snap or cut off your waist thread. Wrap down to about the middle of the hook shank, then come back up and back down multiple times to build a bit of a thread bump to lay the bead chain eyes on. End with your thread in the middle of the thread bump. And this is how I find consistency with eye placement. We will now need some bead chain eyes. I like these black ones. They come in a wide range of colors and also different sizes. Today we will be using the small as it works better for this size hook. Grab some wire cutters and cut off a two ball section. Place the bead chain on top of your thread bump and then wrap it in with multiple tight X wraps and under wraps. If you haven't tied in bead chain or dumbbell eyes before, I've made a video in the past on the correct way to attach them. I will link that in the description section of this video. Anyway, once your eyes are tied in tight, then bring your thread back to the bend of the hook and back up just behind the eye of the hook. This makes a thread base on the shank. Also, make sure the eyes are aligned properly. I turn the vise so I'm looking at it perpendicular, so I can see if the eyes are angled wrong. Now we need some super glue. I like this Loctite with the brush applicator. Brush a dot of super glue on top and bottom of the eyes like so. Now we need some craft fur. Make sure it's extra select as this will get you longer fibers, which is needed for this clouser. Today I'm tying in shrimp pink with white underbody. So let's start with the white fur. Run the point of your scissors under the fur to select a small clump like this, then cut it off the sheet. Now craft fur has a thick under fur with many different lengths of fiber. We need to clean this up. Pinch the tip of the fur clump and then pull out all the under fur and shorter fibers. Then pull out just the longer fibers and replace them in the clump so they are more even. It helps to wet the fur to keep it held together, and then cut off the extra length to make it easier for the next steps. Measure out the craft fur to about twice the length of the shank, then cut the base of the fur to equal that measurement. I find that if I angle the fur toward me and then wrap over it three to four wraps, then the thread will rotate it correctly on top of the hook shank, like it did here. Then pull the fur rearward slightly so it is removed from the hook eye. Then make multiple tight wraps to lock the fur into place. However, I like the more traditional way of tying these. So just keep the wraps more towards the eye of the hook and don't go too deep into where the eyes start. Then jump your thread under the eyes and make a few tight wraps behind the eyes. Then while holding the fur up on top of the hook, make open spiral wraps down the hook shank until you reach the bend of the hook. Then make a few tight wraps at the bend before making open spiral wraps back up the shank until you reach just behind the eyes once again. Then jump your thread under the eyes and to the front of the fly like so. Now we will need some crystal flash. Personally for this size fly, I like the midge size flash and I am using pearl today. Clip two strands off the hank, align the tips, and then I like to wet the flash to keep it together. Place the flash on the side of the fly and make two wraps to hold it into place. If the flash moved when you tied it in, just pull it down so it's tied slightly on the side like so. Then pull the forward facing strands rearward and tie in on the other side of the hook like this. Cut the flash just slightly longer than the craft fur belly. And then I like wetting everything to keep it together like so. Now for the top layer of craft fur. You'll want slightly more fur with this bunch but do the same thing to prepare it by pulling out some of the shorter fibers and longer fibers. However, you don't have to pull out as many of the shorter, so you can pinch it a little deeper into the fiber for the top piece. Measure out the top fur clump to slightly longer than the belly fur, then cut off the butt section and tie it in the same way you tied in the belly. Just keep the wraps more on the tip here as well.
So I like to take the fly out of the vise at this point and stroke the fibers down through the hook bend before replacing the fly back on the vise. Now we need some rubber legs. There are a wide variety of legs from different vendors. Hairline, Wapsi, and even Montana Fly Company make some that I really like. Montana Fly Company ones are more round, which are more durable, but I find that the silly legs like these others flutter a little bit more in the water. So today I'm using the micro silicone legs from Hairline in the hot orange tipped version. Pull off one leg, fold it in half, and align the parts where the orange starts. Now measure out the legs so that the orange starts where the hook bend ends. And then tie in at that measurement on top of the head of the fly, like so, with a couple tight wraps. Then separate the legs and lay them on either side of the hook bend. Now make multiple tight wraps to lock those legs into place. Pull tight on the waist piece of legs and snip off close. Make a few more wraps to really clean up that section and even it out. Now we need a weed guard. I am using simple 20 pound mono here. Cut off a small section and then fold it in half. Now use some needle nose pliers to crimp the bend and also mash it flat so it is easier to tie in. Tie this down right on top of the head with a few tight wraps. Then bend the mono forward and make a few wraps behind the mono so it keeps it lifted up. Pull back the mono and then cut it so it's slightly longer than the hook point. Now you can whip finish the fly, but it is beneficial to whip finish behind the mono to help keep it angled up even more. To finish this fly and make it more durable, I like painting on some of this ultra thin UV resin made by Solares. The applicator brush makes it very easy. You will also need a good UV light. And I will put a link to this one in the description section. It's not too expensive, but it is super powerful. Simply brush on a small amount over the whip finish and cure it with your light. Then I like to turn the fly over and brush some over the bee chain eyes and the spine of the hook as well. And this really makes the fly almost bulletproof. Now for the final step. Let's cut the legs to length. Personally, I like these legs a little shorter than the craft fur tail, but cut them however long you want. And there we have it, a craft fur clouser with some leg accents. I fished this fly last time I went to the Gulf when I was after some redfish. It seemed to get quite a few bites and did quite well. Unfortunately, I didn't catch a redfish, but I did catch a few other species. The best part is the craft fur comes in a wide range of colors, and so do the silly legs. This can be tailored to whatever bait fish or shrimp you're looking to mimic. As you all know, I work closely with both www.dualiesflyfishing.com and www.risenfly.com. I get all of my materials from each of these shops. Risen offers their own branded hooks, rods, reels, and other gear at excellent prices, and everything is top quality. Dualies offers all the name brand materials you might not be able to buy at Risen, but it also has great prices as well. Best of all, both shops are offering you all a discount just for being my subscriber. So go to these shops, load up your cart, and type in McFly at checkout for 15% off of anything you buy. I also wanted to let you all know that I have a Patreon page. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to my videos, one-on-one -on -one help from me with your tying questions, and even discounts on flies I sell. Yes, that's right, I do sell flies, and you can even buy this pattern I tied today. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash McFly Angler to sign up today. Or if you just want to buy my flies without the discount, find me on Instagram, Facebook, or even email me. Link to my email is in my YouTube About page, and let me know what you want to buy. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish. There we go. I don't know. Perch. Yep. Oh, well, little perch, guys. Here we go. Oh, what is this? Trout. Skipjack. <laughs>